Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Norville. This edition Top Stories. Phase 1 of the reopening of the tourism sector has been extended. Five countries are removed from the designated travel bubble. And countries the world over celebrate International Youth Day. Due to the high risk associated with phase one of the reopening of the tourism sector, it has been extended. This disclosure was made during the COVID-19 national response update to the nation and on Tuesday 11th August 2020, where officials from the ministries of tourism and health and wellness asserted that the health and safety of the public remains paramount while returning livelihoods. Officials highlighted that while moving to phase two is not possible at the moment, other areas are being explored. Anissia Antoine has the details. Phase one of the reopening of the tourism sector has been extended to September 30th, 2020, due to the risk associated with this phase. The ministries of tourism and health and wellness are working collaboratively to ensure strict health and safety measures exist and are followed. Minister for Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, Honorable Dominic Fede, indicated that while the first phase has been extended, the Ministry of Tourism is exploring options to add more attractions and restaurants, to name a few. He explained its importance so as to ensure that individuals are able to gain an income to be able to provide for their families. I think we are at a stage now where we need to consider having a look at uh, if not moving into phase two, maybe phase and a half, uh, for want of a better phrase. And that is to ensure that every step of the way that we place at paramount importance the health and safety of the people of St. Lucia. It is the only way that we can succeed, and that is by maintaining the very disciplined and stringent protocols which we've put in place to make sure that A, our population uh, is protected first and foremost, and then B, uh, to get some business and get the country back to work. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, Donalyn Vitae, highlighted that considerations for Phase 2 encompasses the inclusion of dive as an activity, reopening of other sites and attractions once COVID-19 certified for operation, and reopening villas and Airbnb properties to international jurisdictions. Right now, we are getting the direction from um, Ministry of Health that the level of risk um, still present in our source markets is too high and it is too concerning. And so we are currently evaluating what phase two is going to look like for us. Um, like Minister indicated, it might mean that we have a phase one and a half or we can extend phase one where we're able to add in more services where those that we can do um, safely and where we have the cooperation for, um, of the service providers, but we are still holding consultations. We will hold with the sites and attractions. We have been speaking to the divers and all the water -based, other water-based activities, but essentially it is a decision that has to be taken on board with the consultation of the sector and whether or not they're willing to participate because their participation within this high-risk period would mean the level of preparation would have to be in check before we move on. The Ministry of Tourism will provide an update as to the next steps to be taken in the reopening of the tourism sector. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. The Ministry of Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries assures that as it seeks to reopen the tourism sector, there will be no compromising on the health of the citizenry. In fact, the country's management of COVID-19 has been described as exemplary as it continues to make adjustments where necessary, instituting rigorous protocols to ensure the safety of all. St. Lucia is setting the pace for the region with its exemplary management of COVID-19. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, Donalyn VT, indicated that as the country seeks to adjust to the new normal, no efforts have been spared to ensure the public safety. 13 properties on island have been COVID-19 certified, having met rigorous protocols, which required a level of investment by the properties. Of these 13 properties, nine of them have reopened and are taking in active bookings. This, according to the Permanent Secretary, aids in gaining the confidence of both staff and visitors staying at the properties. 
Other entities have been taking the necessary measures to become COVID-19 certified and resume operations. We also have a yachting that has resumed its service. We have the IGY Rodney Bay Marina, which is opened, as well as Marigo Bay Marina. We have the yachting sex, sorry, the maritime sector. Um, apart from yachting, we also have the table charters that are open. We have about 26 operators that have gone through. Um, we have 56 in all in terms of those who are actively involved. Um, in terms of SUFRA, SUFRA is putting um, its house in order and ensuring that protocols are in place for it to resume and really announce itself to be part of the sector again. And there are lots of people within the, the SUFRA B who are operators who are ready and willing to, to resume their trade. The tourism sector, according to the permanent secretary, is a diverse one. And as efforts are made towards its reopening, she assures that the health and safety of all St. Lucians remain paramount. As of the 12th of August 2020, all 25 COVID-19 patients have fully recovered and tested negative for COVID-19. This gives St. Lucia a 100% recovery rate as currently there are no reported active COVID-19 cases. The island has recorded no COVID-19 related deaths. 99 test results received on August 11, 2020 were all negative. A total of 4,373 tests have been conducted to date. National epidemiologist in the Ministry of Health and Wellness, Dr. Michelle Fassois, urged members of the public to remain vigilant and continue adhering to all stipulated protocols given the increased risk associated with the reopening of the country's various sectors. We remind everyone that as we continue with the phased reopening of the country, the risk for introduction of COVID-19 has increased. The public is advised that all protocols are still in place, including the reduced numbers for public transportation and hygiene protocols for private sector establishments. These also include the use of face masks in public, the sanitizing of hands and maintaining the recommended six foot physical distance from others. The Ministry of Health once again reiterates the importance of maintaining the quarantine of returning nationals and visitors as it is a great measure in minimizing the risk of transmitting COVID-19. The Ministry of Health and Wellness urges individuals who have been placed in quarantine to adhere to the 14-day quarantine period. Where home quarantine has been granted, individuals must remain there for the full period of time. This action is to protect the health and safety of every individual in the country. The Bureau of Health Education reminds the general public of the do's and don'ts of home quarantine. This after 10 nationals were placed into a government facility for violating home quarantine protocols. 14-day institutional quarantine remains the gold standard for observation of individuals internationally, including those entering St. Lucia in the wake of the coronavirus. Health and Family Life Educator Naomi Grandison is concerned that the gravity of the pandemic may be lost on many because of the information they choose to rely on. If, for instance, persons uh, are receiving information from one, or they're just bent on receiving an anti-establishment information, like even if they don't know the credibility of the source, uh, I, what I'm feeling um, on the ground is that there are quite a few people who, because they have an antagonistic perspective of whatever the establishment is, they will tend to gravitate to information that just goes against it. People need to understand that giving into information that minimizes COVID-19 is only going to put us at greater risk. You understand? If, if we're going to act um, like it's not an issue, we put ourselves at greater risk and we're encouraging persons, and it's not until it, it, it hits home sometimes that we, we don't change, and we don't have to wait for that. In an interview on NTN's Morning Brew Thursday, Grandison stressed that those who home quarantine and their relatives in the household must uphold the protocols. Major requirements for home quarantine are restrictions on visitors to the home. You need to reduce on the visitors, and this individual should have a separate room, or at least be sleeping at a distance, Far, further from everybody else, have a separate bathroom. Mm -hmm. And if there is not adequate facilities for that, that there is sanitization after they use the bathroom, mm -hmm. okay, a specific time for them to use it. So this is just as a precaution. So if the person is in, infectious, is threading, shredding the virus for whatever reason, 
then it could mitigate the further transfer yeah. of that infection. Over the last few months, people who have been granted home quarantine have not been adhering to the protocols. All persons on home quarantine are required to stay indoors for 14 days. As such, further restrictions on home quarantine have been instituted with immediate effect. Anyone found in breach of home quarantine will be immediately taken to a government quarantine facility to complete their time. Under this act, the police officers have the duty to enforce compliance. Five additional countries have been removed from the designated travel bubble. The Ministry of Health and Wellness highlighting the criteria for countries to be added or removed from the designated bubble indicates that based on information, it is able to respond quickly to changes adding or removing countries as seen fit. Anisia Antoine tells us more. Caribcation's latest marketing brand, Bubblecation, allows travelers from countries within the designated travel bubble to reconnect with family and friends or enjoy a getaway in St. Lucia. Visitors within the bubble countries with a travel history from these areas in the last 21 days will be exempt from quarantine. However, they are required to obtain a negative PCR test result no more than seven days prior to the date of travel and are subject to mandatory screening on arrival. Ensuring that St. Lucia remains a safe destination in the face of COVID-19, the travel bubble has recently been revised. St. Lucia Tourism Authority's Public Relations Manager, Jerrine Georges, noted that following examination of travel bubble countries by the Ministry of Health and Wellness, five countries have been removed from the travel bubble, including the Bahamas, Jamaica, Aruba, St. Martin and Bermuda. As of August 12, 2020, the following countries now form a part of the Caribbean bubble and are eligible for participation in the ongoing publication campaign. Antigua and Barbuda, Anguilla, Barbados, Bonaire, British Virgin Islands, Caracou, Dominica, Grenada, Guyana, Montserrat, St. Barthelme, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Trinidad and Tobago. To qualify for publication, participants are reminded that they must be coming from the jurisdiction of origin, no less than 21 days of having been there, and must present a negative PCR COVID-19 test within seven days of arrival in St. Lucia. They too must pre-fill the travel registration form on stlucia.org and check with the airlines for travel schedules. The public relations manager explained that the health and safety of citizens and local communities remain paramount. Medical Officer of Health at the Ministry of Health and Wellness, Dr. Glenford Joseph, explained the criteria used to determine a country's status as to whether or not it is included in the designated travel bubble list. The Ministry of Health and Wellness continues to assess uh, the COVID-19 situation, uh, not only in St. Lucia, but globally. And as such, uh, depending on the level of transmission, the risk, of uh, the level of transmission that is taking place in country, in those countries, where the risk would be elevated, at least once you recognize those, you want to limit uh, these persons who can come to St. Lucia and uh, be moving around freely. Because once you come from a territory which, where there is a relatively high level of transmission, it means that persons, even though they may have a negative COVID test at the time when the test was done, they could have been exposed uh, subsequently and within that seven days come to St. Lucia and develop symptoms and begin sh uh, shedding the virus. So for those countries with a, a low level of transmission or no transmission, those are the ones and especially those within the Caribbean territory to be within the Caribbean bubble. For more information on the publication, individuals can log on to www.caribcation.org or call 458-7101. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. Countries across the world are celebrating International Youth Day. Every day, young people are enriching institutions and processes at the local, national and global levels. This year, the theme of International Youth Day is Youth Engagement for Global Action. It highlights the importance and value of young people's contributions and draws lessons on how their representation and engagement in formal institutional politics can be significantly enhanced.
Minister for Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, Honorable Dr. Gail Brigabert, indicated that she remains committed to seeing that young people continue to be at the forefront of the development of our country. She explained that continued investments in education will ensure that no one is left behind and that a quality education for all becomes our reality. The government, she added, will continue to amplify efforts aimed at modernizing our education system, making it more relevant to our times, and provide greater opportunities for the learning and application of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, as well as the creative sectors for our young people. The minister explained that young people are also the country's hope in achieving the Sustainable Development 2030 goals and the government will continue to encourage them to play their part and allow their voices to be heard. She welcomed the United Nations theme and ended by reiterating her unwavering commitment to the young people of St. Lucia, stating that she fully supports the youth in their positive endeavors and will continue to empower them so that together they are able to build a new St. Lucia. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle of We All. In an effort to ensure patient and first responder safety, the St. Lucia Fire Service has reviewed its patient transfer procedures, especially for patients with respiratory distress. Face masks will be provided. At no time during transportation should the face mask be removed. Please be patient and cooperative during this time to ensure you receive the best possible care while keeping our first responders safe. Welcome back. We now join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Monsieur le Tarjanel, Général, Monsieur et Madame, Département de l'Université de Responsabilité, pour information à la gouvernement de cette ci la CGIS, et la Télévision Nationale PIA-NTN, Kapozoto, Nouvelle, à Kweol. Présente, Primus Hutchinson. Depuis le 9 à mois de juillet, l'industrie touristique cette ci a ressuscité l'opération et puis le commencement du voyage avion commercial à PIA encore. Pour te faire ça possible, il y a une grande quantité de propriétaires touristiques à cette ci tenu pour trouver une certification de la maladie de Corona et que j'ai ouvert la porte encore pour les étrangers. Un parmi eux qui a ouvert c'est Sandals Grand, St. Lucian, Ladera, Sugar Beach, Viceroy Resort, Stonefield Villa Resort, Big Gardens Beach Resort and Spa, Jade Mountain and Chasney, Windjammer Landing Villa Beach Resort, Marigo Bay Resort and Spa and Marina, Serenity Coconut Bay, Tete Rouge Resort, Caiblan Villa Hotel, et Cap Maison. Secretary Pormana, Minister des Affaires Touristiques, Donalyn Vite, déclare que la situation économique a fait beaucoup de fret à ce pays. Mais selon Secretary Pormana, a moins qui y a 1600 travailleurs touristiques, j'avais eu un travail à hôtel pendant l'autre qui a continué pour opérer en se facilité la quarantaine. Mamzelle Vite a annoncé qu'il y a un total de 600 chauffeurs taxi qui a trouvé certifié pour opérer et présentement, j'ai commencé le travail et aussi yo qui a conduit le bateau touristique. Ce que le parlement a dit, qui a commencé depuis jeudi qui passé et vendredi, ce chauffeur taxi et l'autre qui est engagé dans la transportation touristique qui a, qui a reçu la certification pour opérer. Mamzelle Vite dit aussi, à peu près 1 500 en plus qui ça travaille en secteur touristique pays encore. Selon Mme Zelvite, en parmi l'autre secteur qui a opéré, c'est le service nager. Le secrétaire permanent dit qu'il a pris marche des enfants pour les moments, petit à petit, il a augmenté l'opération touristique pays là. Le programme Bobble là a aussi fait possible pour augmenter l'employement en industrie touristique là. Le programme là a établi pour faciliter les individus pour payer à à tomber en bas pour un bubble pour sa visiter cette ici sans yonner pour entrer en quarantaine pour 14 jours. Depuis que ça a présenté, preuve qui est négatif 7 jours avant de voyager. Commencé depuis le 7 mois d'août 2020, ce pays a été opéré en bas 
uh, awash masala, si atik ek babula, aruba, anguilla, babad, bermuda, bonaire, British Virgin Islands, asi si pe lil di viaj angli, Curacao, Dominic, Laguinad, Guiana, Montserrat, Saint Barthelme, Saint Kitts, ek Nevis, Sevesa, ek Laguinadien, ek Trinidad, ek Tobago. Pada bermuda westi abah program babula ki uh, voyager ça c'est yo qui ca voyager sorti bon milieu de en uh, juridiction internationale ca y trouver traité coyon étranger international ce que pour on a noté que tout secteur touristique ni vous est une chance égale pour un programme bubble là ca fait exactement ça mademoiselle vite déclaré aussi que pendant la journée en place accommodation pour les étrangers hot pays international arrangement j'ai aussi en place pour programme bubble là en pays caraïbes là qui compliant des précautions contre malade de corona qui a trouvé location pour rester à plus petit établissement en pays cette ici alors ces étrangers là qui en plus haut risque qui a resté en ces établissements touristiques qui n'est tout avec un protocole qui est bien ouide pour protéger le travail pays avec les étrangers aussi première phase pour vivre ouvert secteur touristique cette ici en bas phase des risques toujours et pour raison ça là Et j'ai trouvé longi pour le 3 septembre 2020. Cette fois-ci, j'ai enregistré 25 cas de maladie de corona et les derniers trois qui étaient testés, j'ai géré assez bien, ils ont tous sorti négatif. La situation s'est placée cette fois-ci en degré 100% libre de maladie de corona et ça veut dire qu'il n'y a présentement ni zéro cas de maladie. Le résultat en total qui sorti le 11 à mois d'août montre que 99% négatif et un total de 4373 tests j'ai fait déjà le département de santé qui a fait public la chose qui pays a qu'a viré ouvert en en phase c'est faut changer c'est ici un risque toujours des maladies de corona alors il y a conseil public là pour continuer à suivre tout protocole pour réduire à sous possibilité maladie ça là si moi j'ai commandé pour moins passager à bord auto et pour l'année reg en établissement secteur public principalement pour la ville en main c'est vie masse à suffisance et c'est pire de social ministère de santé qui a continué faire appel pour moun qui en quarantine pour obéir 14 jours et yo aussi qui en quarantine à caillou même pour aussi respecter 14 jours ça là pour protéger santé publique et pays généralement ministère de santé qui a plaidé et puis public là pour aider yo continuer Faire bataille contre maladie de corona et continuer pour suivre toute règle de protection contre maladie salaire. Les travailleurs en opération Wasco en façade sous pays vieux fort, qui ont trouvé plus de facilités d'accommodation pour placer à dans une position qui est plus favorable pour le conduire travail et utilité salaire. Durant la cérémonie, pour te matcher la troisième phase du projet de l'eau en Paris salaire, Semaine passée, ministre des Affaires agricoles qui a aussi une responsabilité pour Wasco, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, a annoncé un plan pour faire la vie plus libre, pour faciliter une meilleure opération pour le travail à Wasco en ce vieux fort. Et puis, quand le gouvernement nous a décidé de nous, nous commencer à mettre un office neuf pour ce, pour ce, pour ce travail à nous ensemble, là, et puis nous avons commencé à projeter ça, et puis nous avons hâte que le projet soit fini. Um, um, bon air l'année prochaine. So at least nous nous commencer gloire, nous commencer office là, so at least nous ca concentrate pour improver la um, situation en sauf là. Dans mon sauf office en off là ca moi des question qui ça gaille fait. But sauf là c'était office sauf là pas de pas de bon. Et puis nous commencer puis sauf là avant et puis là nous finir sauf là. Co gouvernement nous ca concentrate office en off là. But definitely I'm happy that um, I have resources here and the board here to work with the and contractor to buy these people here for the first place to work. Thank you, Mr. Madam. This is the case we have to have a new novel for today. I want to thank you for your time. I want to give you an invitation. I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank you for your time. Merci à Pearl Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. 
You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Jadal Novel. Thank you.